What's going on guys, we're back here in the shop. We got a transmission or transaxle out of a Polaris Ranger 800. Uh, we pulled this out of machine. The customer's wanting us to go through and rebuild it. It has got a busted case on it. We're gonna get into that here in a little bit. But the first thing we're gonna do with it, we're gonna take off this bracket and everything that hold, holds the emergency brake on and everything. Then we're gonna move over to the other side and take the shift position sensor and everything off and the levers and stuff that works the shifting so let's get started on this now this has got three bolts in this bracket and there is some ball bearings in here that this works off of this is kind of war so them may fall out i've done had one fall out just keep up with them you should be able to take these three bolts off and then this slide up Take our E clip off. Shift sensor off. Be gentle when you pry on these because it is plastic. These right here kind of pressed. They got grooves and stuff or splines that it goes up on, but you still have to, they kind of press yourself on. So you gotta work them off. This is glued on, so you may end up having to take a small hammer or mallet and bump it. We're going to try to get underneath it with a screwdriver first just to see. So now we're going to have to get something else. There should be a little spring in here, so if it jumps out, it won't really be of any concern because we're going to put all this back together. I'm going to take and set all this to the side. We're going to take our brake disc off. Now you can see where our transmission has busted. So what I've done here is I've just turned the transmission up on its side so that we can see all of our bolts and everything. And we've got bolts that go around this whole case. And you've got bolts, you got one bolt here in the middle we're gonna take all them out. Okay, so now we still got it up on its side. We got all our bolts out of it. If you look on all transmissions and stuff, they've all got these pry points on it. Now keep in mind, they're pry points. They're not beating points. You can knock these off. I just take a regular pry bar, stick in here, and you're gonna bump it. And see we got a small crack here. And you're gonna work it around. So since I've got this side open, I'm gonna take a pry bar and stick in here. I'm gonna go around to the other side, work it up as well. And 
this is just one of them things you gotta work with it to get it to come off. So what you usually run into is once you get the case coming back off, then it's gonna reach a point sometimes to where it feels like it's stuck again. What I usually do is on these output shafts and especially like where your axles go in and out at, if you'll take your mallet, you can't necessarily do it down here, but like up here on this output shaft, you can bump it. And that's gonna kind of help wiggle that seal loose. half off and right away we can see that we already know that this half of our case is busted and right away the first thing I notice is that this race is on the bearing without any the rest of the bearing is gone so now the next thing we're going to do is take this transmission apart and inspect everything in it to see if it's worthy of being rebuilt or if it's going to have to have a re replacement for it. Okay, so now when this machine was brought in with this transmission in it, it was making a racket and stuff. It sounded like it was kind of jumping around inside the transmission. We've already realized that it's got a busted case and everything. So our next step is we're going to take our chain tensioner off here. We know our chain has got a little bit of wear on it. We can see that. We already can see that the chain is a little stretched because it's down to the next to the last notch on the tensioner. So we're gonna work on getting these gears and the shifting cogs and stuff out of it so we can see if any of our dog gears and stuff and shifting cogs are wore to see if it's causing it to jump out of gear if that might have caused any of this damage. It's just something you have to check especially when you're this deep into one because we've got metal shavings everywhere. I'm sure some of this is from the bearing coming apart and some of it is probably from some of the pieces of the case that fell in here and got chewed up by all these big gears. So regardless, this has got to come apart to be clean because we are going to use this half of the case. And we're putting all new bearings in this, including with everything else. So we want to make sure we got all this out because failure to get any of this out is just going to eat up the bearing and stuff that we're going to be putting back in it. First thing I'm going to do is just take this tensioner off and you just got a spring here. This pulls out. And then we're just going to wiggle this loose. And as you can see, that breaks tension on it. Now you can move this around so putting it back together shouldn't be too much of a task. We're just going to stack this all, all together off to the side. And this race is actually holding this gear and everything on. So with this race being stuck on here, pressed on here, which probably any given way, this is going to happen. So... What I've done is I've laid it up on its side and took a hammer and pecked on the back side here, right here. And I was able to knock this loose to pull this off. And here's our chain. And this is just a piece, this right here is what works your uh, turf mode and everything in these Ranger transmissions. And here's our little uh, differential that works the turf mode and everything along with it. So, of course, all this is going to be cleaned out to make sure we get all our shavings and everything out of it. When you take this stuff like this apart, be sure to go through it. Check all your teeth. Yes, it is used. It's going to have a little wear. But we're not looking for... You know, if it's got gashes and stuff tuck out of it or things like that, you know, it's got to be replaced. I mean, you will have a little wear on these. It's come out of a used bike. But if it looks questionable, that's usually a good indication I don't use it. So we got two torques that are holding this. I call this a splash shield right here. Just gonna lay it 
to the side. All this stuff's gonna have to be cleaned really good. Now, this gear right here's got holes in it for a reason. It has Torx heads, bolts that are down in there. We're gonna have to take them out. And this right here, because this gear right here is overlapping this gear, this right here is more or less gonna have to come out as one unit. So we got our bolts out here. Now what we're gonna do, and this right here is just gonna be one of them things. It's, it's gonna take a little, little bit of time and patience because these bearings and stuff fit in there tight. So you just kind of gotta wiggle it around until you get it. Work itself loose and this one here is it is in there. Let's see. So what we ended up doing here is just laying it up on its side so we could better get a hold of it. And working both of these back and forth to get them out. So now that we got everything out, now we can do a full visual inspection. And these are our dog gears for our forward reverse and stuff. And we can go through and inspect all this. We're gonna get it all cleaned up first, give it all a good inspection, go over it and then get ourselves a part list to get the parts list together and see exactly what all we're gonna need to get this thing rebuilt and put back together. So we've gone over our gears and stuff after we got them cleaned up. <clears throat> Everything looks pretty good as far as our gears goes. We gotta get this uh, old race off right here. On these transmissions, normally what happens is, is this bearing goes out right here where the park brake disc rests on. And whenever it goes out, <clears throat> it takes the case with it. And as you can see right here where this one busted, all these shavings. It busted all this off. So we've got us a new case. We've got us a bearing kit. And <clears throat> since we've got this transmission tour part, when you have transmission tour part, and this can be, I know this is 800, same thing applies to the Razors and to the 570s. They call these right here dogs, and I call them dog ears. And what it is, this right here is what controls uh, forward and reverse and your low and high gears. And as you can see, what they do is they slide with the shift forks, depending on what gear you put it in, and it locks it in, and this is what turns the transmission. Now, what happens is, is when these transmissions see abuse and stuff and wear, they start wearing on these ears. And I've got one here. This is out of a 570. And as you can see right here on the edges, it's war. And this is just for an example, this did not come out of this transmission. And what it does is this plate here will go in there and when it gets pressure put under it, it slips, which causes it to have a noise coming from the transmission. And as you can see on this side here, they have really ate down and rounded over. And the same thing can happen in these transmissions. It can happen in the Razor transmissions. That's why it's important to come to a complete stop when you shift. Another thing to look out for is, and we haven't pulled it out yet, but your snorkel gear and your bull gear, which I believe we got, I believe this is, a, this is one of them. This is a gear off of a Polaris Razor that was not installed correctly. This goes onto the output shaft. Uh, this is something, if you got something anywhere near similar to this, this is 
kind of on the drastic side, but you don't want to be running something like this. It will cause it to wear on your other gears and stuff and cause it to have racket and it can also cause it to damage this. So we've got to get our bearings off of our bull gear and stuff here or something. This is called a sub pinion gear, I do believe. And this is our output shaft. Our snorkel gear is located on the inside of it, which is in here. We've got to pull all of this to get our bearings and stuff out of it so we can put our bearings and everything in our new case. So what we're going to work on now is getting this output shaft tore out so we can get to our bearings and stuff that are located on the inside of this case. Now the way I get these out is uh, I usually just run a screw up in here and then take a claw hammer and pull the seal out. This one right here was a little bit more difficult to get out. It's been on there for a while. You can see we had to take a couple different screws and poke at it. But as you can see, we didn't really damage anything. You can screw them down in there until you hit this, this uh, screw that holds everything in. And it's going to kind of help push it out. You don't want to get carried away with this, of course. You know, you don't want to be damaging that to where you can't use it. We finally got this out. Now... I do believe there's a snap ring we gotta take out and then we need to now we just gotta unscrew this but before we do that we got to take this bolt out that holds the lock for this uh snorkel gear so what we're doing here this thing is the reason for the bolt in it is, is it locks this in place. So this thing should be pretty easy to screw out. As you can see right here, now you want to make sure you get this cleaned out real good before you start trying to get this out because it is very fine threaded and they are very sensitive. Uh, if yours is having some trouble to come out, they do make a tool for this. Um, I think... It's going to look something similar to this. I'll have a link in the description for the exact one. This is one for the razors. I believe the one for my, for this, I think a buddy of mine's got it. But luckily this one right here is easy to come out like it's supposed to. And when they're easy to come out, I mean, you see I'm just using a punch and pull it right out. And as you can see right here is where you'll screw it in there. And this is the lock on this nut. They call this a nut. And that's where that bolt goes in. And that's what locks it because it's easy to screw in and out. So now that we got this out, we've got to change the bearing on it here. Of course, it's you can hear it's a little gritty because it's been full of metal shavings. And we got to take this nut off and change the bearings out in here. Okay, guys, we got our snorkel gear out. So now what we're going to do is take this... This is part of our turf mode. We got to get this bearing out. It's going to be very close to getting this out without hitting this. So I don't want to take a chance. So I'm just going to pop this out. And you may be able to just, just yep, just like that. And we're just going to set this off to the side. We will put it back in. It's, there's a spring and stuff in here. Be careful not to lose this stuff. It's very important. Okay, so we got our case flipped back over here. What we're also gonna do now is knock this bearing out. And again, I've got, uh, in my description, I got a list of this stuff right here. All this is is a race driver. Yes, it's been used a lot. Uh, we're going to knock this out, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this case back outside, pressure wash it out, get it good and cleaned up, and get ready to install our new bearings and stuff on all of our other gears. So we got our old bearing out. As you can see here, it tries to lock up. We got our new bearing here. 
So now it's time to install it. So we got our bearing in. Next step, we're gonna put a spring back in here for a turf mode. And when you go to reinstall this, you want this lip up on this, or excuse me, the spring up on the lip. So we got this in place here, got a little bit of Loctite because it did have Loctite on it before. Okay, so we got this part of our turf mode put in. So now we're going to focus on getting our bearings and stuff changed and our output shaft. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take off this snap ring and push our output shaft out of our nut here. When you take your snap ring off, there is going to be a little shim washer. Be sure them two stay together. Now we should be able to press our output shaft down through this nut. Once you get it out, it's gonna look something like this. Now we can work on getting this bearing off. So we got our bearing off up here on our output shafts. We got another one that's down here. It too has a snap ring on it. And it will ha also have, I believe, another spacer underneath this snap ring. So let's get it off. And this one don't have a spacer under it, so we're good. Now it's time for us to press this off. Put that on there, I'm just gonna snug it up like that, bring it over to the press. So we got our old burn off, now it's time to put our new burn on. We're gonna slide it on here like so. We'll take up some of our gap here with some spacers. We're even like spreading these apart is just hitting that where it's fatter at on that shaft. We got our bearing on, now we got to put our snap ring back on. So this one's pressed on, we got the snap ring back on it. Now we got to get the bearing out of this nut right here. It has a snap ring in it. Sit it off to the side, this bearing pushes out this way. So we gotta get something to put in here to push it out. Okay, so there is a shim on this where this lock ring goes in, so don't lose it. So 
we got her bearing pressed in. Now it's time to put her shim back in and her lock ring. Now it's time to press these two halves back together. While you're putting this on, make sure you're putting your nut on the correct way because this has to screw into your transmission. If you're following along in this video, this is going to be a good reminder. So we got this nut pressed down where it's supposed to be. We're going to put our shim on it, our washer. Reinstall our lock ring. So there's no easy way about getting this off because of this big gear and this gear on the back side is made on. So we have to knock this off this way. I don't have anything special made for this. So I'm just gonna resort to the old cold chisel and hammer. And probably don't normally come off that easy, but this one did because it was it's already been beat up pretty good so now we can take our snap ring pliers and begin to take this apart to get all the way down here to replace this bearing so we got a snap ring doesn't appear to have any i'm just gonna stack that on top there and we got another snap ring here snap ring gotta love these snap rings and we got our shim so now we're able to get to this bearing that goes to our bull gear. We got our bearing on. Now it is time to put our shim on and our lock ring. So now we're gonna install, this is our piece that holds everything down into the transmission and snorkel gear together. Now we're gonna install our big gear and it came off with this center piece pointing up. Give it a little love tap. Now it's time to put our lock ring, snap ring back on it.
This is gonna go on again. This centerpiece right here faces up. It's got a pocket here on the back side made to sit down on this collar. Get this lovely little snap ring. All right, so this, we don't have a bearing here because it's broke. This is our race. So we compare it to this, and the races are the same, and it fits in this. So this is the bearing we're gonna use there. And we're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to press it the rest of the way on. So when you're pressing this bearing down, you do want to press it all the way down to this lock ring, but do not shove it past it. On this, these smaller bearings here, I usually just knock them off with a punch. It usually don't take much to get them off, and you ain't got to fight this whole thing in a press. So we got this bearing off here and it's garbage. We're gonna sit it right there so we can compare it with our kit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start unstacking this so we can get access to where we can split this. Then you can use it on a press. It makes it a little easier so you ain't having to fight both pieces. And when I unstack these, I like to stack them off and flip them face down like that and these are the dog ears that i was showing earlier yes they're supposed to have that little bit of wear on the front side but other than that they look great and we have a snap ring here and these dog ears are here look great so we're just going to take this snap ring off and our little washer shim and we should be able to get this gear off and then that will allow us to work around with our reverse chain. Okay, so we got this gear off, and it comes off like this, so we're going to put it face down. And <clears throat> this is the bearing that goes inside it. We're just going to sit it there. We're going to place it here in a second. That gives us access to our reverse chain. Easier about getting it off. And now we have two separate pieces, which makes it a lot easier to work with these separately. So now we're going to work on knocking our bearings off this right here. These right here have no lock rings on it or nothing, so we're going to get our bearing separator and go over to the press and yank these off. So we got this bearing off. Here's our new one. <clears throat> Before we have to move our press and stuff back around, we're going to go ahead and pull this bearing off and get it where we can replace it. So we got both our bearings removed. Now we're gonna reinstall them with the new ones. So we're gonna do this one first before we gotta move our press. this part of our shaft and these bearings don't have no lock rings or nothing that goes on them or snap rings so we're just going to set it to the side and this is the other half of that 
and we're going to pull this bearing right here off. So we got these bearings pressed back on. Now it's time to put these two halves back together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our chain back on here. Now this does take just a little bit of wiggling. Just like that. And it's not gonna stay on there perfect because it's not got nothing holding on there. We got it in the general area. So now we're gonna go back with our gears and this gear here had the needle bearing that was in the middle of it. So we got a new one of them right here. Now that we got this gear on, it's time to put our shim washer back on and our snap ring. So now we got our snap ring all on right here. We've replaced this needle bearing that goes on this gear. So now it's time for us to put, I call these dog ears. Put this on, it's gonna go there. And we've got, a, this is our old bearing. We're gonna put a new bearing on. And I'm probably just gonna use a hammer and just peck this one on. So we got all our bearings and stuff changed on this. We've got our bearing on our output shaft changed, on our bull gear changed. We've got our bearing in our case. The only bearing we got left to change is, well, we got to put our bearing in our new case here, which is here. We got this bearing in. Now it's time to put everything together, put our two halves together. Okay, so we're fixing to put all this back into our case. These two pieces here, or you can call them three, whichever, have to go in together. Because this gear runs on this gear, like this. They can be aggravating. Just take your time with it. You might have to take a mallet and bump it. Maybe you won't have to, maybe it won't be too bad. It's such a sure fit that it. Hang it up on this metal one. All right, guys, as y'all remember, on this 
<clears throat> bull gear here. We had a plate down there that went around our bearing. And these four holes in this gear is so you can get down there to the bolts that hold that plate in to bolts the bull gear down to the transmission housing. And I use Loctite on these. That's just what I do. You're going to read some forms that say don't. You're going to read some forms that say do if you're the type of person that reads forms. I always do, and I've had good luck with it. So once we get our screws and everything for our bull gear tightened down, now it's time to put our snorkel gear and output shaft in. Now, this right here should be easy to tighten up. If not, then you've got some problems going on. They do make a tool for this, but usually these are so easy that I don't even bother getting mine out. So what you're gonna wanna do is screw this nut right here all the way in, and then you're gonna back it off either three to four little teeth that are on this nut. And you can count them from in here in this hole, which is right there. Now, I call this sitting the backlash. What you're looking for is just a little bit of slack in between your bull gear and snorkel gear. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow fluid to get in there on the gears while it's working so nothing gets wore, wore, wore out in a funny way. So once you get your backlash and everything set, like I said, this bolt, this nut right here works out freely. So right here in this hole, you gotta put a, a bolt in it to hold the, that locks the nut in place. And I put a little bit of Loctite on it also. If you're trying to put in this bolt and it's not tightening down all the way, it's because you're hitting one of the pins on the, or one of the teeth on the nut. Okay, guys, so this part right here is a little tricky. When you're installing the shifting drum and the shifting forks, you're going to want to put the forks in first. And if you'll look in here, you can see exactly how I've got this set up. <clears throat> the pin to the fork is on this side, which is going, you know, on this side right here. This is the front part of our transmission. Or excuse me, this is the rear part of our transmission on this side. This is the front part over here where our output shaft is at. So our pins are closest to the back on the top and bottom. And you're gonna to have to get out there here on the back side and pick up this gear in order to get the fork in here and, and play with this one right here in order to get the fork in. Once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to pick this up and move it over to the side here so you can get the shift drum in. And it takes some wiggling around and stuff and it's it can be done, it's not that big a deal, it just takes a little bit of patience. It's so tight. Me trying to record it and stuff, you're going to be looking at something like this. And I felt like it'd just be better for me to explain it. So what you want to do is put your shift forks in. Come in here. Make sure your pins with your transmission. We're going to zoom out right here. I got my transmission laying like this. This is my half. My output shaft is facing on my right-hand side. I've got it sitting here on blocks, so it sits somewhat level. I'm going to put my shift forks in. I'm going to go around here, pick up this gear, and feed it, feed it in. Once I get it in, I'm going to pick it up out of its slot down here, out of its hole, and move it over to the right to allow me to get my shift drum in. Then, I'm gonna have to, then you're going to have to play with it and move it back over to get it lined back up with the shift drum. It's not that big a deal, it's just hard to record because it's all so tight and you're going to be looking at my hands doing this and I just felt like that wouldn't be much help. So now we got all this in, everything is working good. I've done shift it around and it's hard It's hard to do it without the other half on here because every time you go to shift it, everything's wanting to move around. But I've done shift it around, everything is working properly. You can do that by just simply, I've got a punch here. 
like I said, it can be done. I've got it shifted down in there right now where I, it's hard for me to get a punch in there. But if, you're, if you want to go through it and check your gears and stuff, if you'll play with it, you can shift it through them. But <clears throat> everything on this one's working good. There we go. All right, the tighter's gonna move. You can see here, it just moved that gear up. It's got everything running in a different gear ratio. So everything's working good. Now all we're just left to do is we're gonna put our main gear on the back that drives our axles and our chain and stuff for that and set up everything for our turf mode. So now it's time to put our, I call this the differential part of the transmission. This right here is the gear that operates the turf mode. It goes up in here like this and whenever they slide together, you can see it locks like that. And of course this right here works it up and down with your turf mode. So what we're gonna do is slide this in right here. It is best to put these two on at the same time, the chain and gear. So once you have your chain and everything on, you're gonna want to put your tensioner in. And it is in two pieces. It goes on just like that. So this spring pushes against this as the chain wears. It works us out. As you can see, we still have life left in it. Once you get that on, then we got this little splash piece that goes in. It slides down in here. It's got its own little pocket. It falls in down here. Then it's got these two bolts or screws to hold it in. All right, we got a little guard in. As you can see, everything's working good. If you made it this far in the video, don't forget to smash that like button. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our gasket maker sealer and put around this and join our two halves together. We've then got our bearing replaced here. We done earlier. These bearings here will go into this case so what you're going to want to do now is get you a clean rag and get you some good uh, cleaner, some carb cleaner or something to make sure you got all the oil and stuff off this. Of course, this case is new. We're going to wipe it off because usually they got a little oily film on it and then put our sealer on it to put them both together. Now that we've got our sealer on, it's time to join our two halves together. What you're going to do is to work this down evenly as possible. Now, y'all seen me. I've got this is just an old output shaft out of a razor. I just took it down in here. This tensioner on this is going to cock this back in just a little. And I just use this to pull it over to line it up with the housing. It works better if you get a couple extra hands. It can be done by yourself. But you're just going to ease it down evenly. Getting the and alignment pins lined up and everything and just working it gently down and now we got it all the way down so now what we're going to do is work on putting our bolts in you want to do this in a crisscross pattern so everything gets tightened down evenly So 
So now what we're gonna do is work on putting our seals in here. Now you can put your seals in before you put the case together or after. Don't really matter. Some say it's easier this way. Some say it's easier that way. It's a personal preference. And all you're gonna wanna do is, is just work these seals in evenly the best you can. You can pick them in with a hammer or you can use a socket. There's several different ways of doing this. Me, I usually just use a mallet or a hammer and just work them around. A good way to get these started, you can use a race driver. Now it's only gonna go down till it's even with this outer ring right here of the axle housing piece where it goes in. Another thing I do is I put grease around the lips of my seals to help them slide on easier. And then all that's left to do is we're gonna take a back end of a punch and just tap this one in. Okay, so this is your output shaft on the transmission where your secondary clutch goes. This cell right here has always, for me, been a little bit of a pain to put in. And I guess if you put it in before you put the case on, it's easier. But I've always had trouble with it trying to push the spring on the back side of the seal out that holds it tight against the shaft. So if you work on transmissions like I do and you have one of these tools, and this one has been modified because I broke it once. That you take the same nut that we took out of our output shaft on this, and this one works on a razor. You can slide it over and take your two prongs and put them to the side. And you can drive it down, and it does not damage the seal whatsoever. So while we got this transmission flipped up on its side, we're going to put our parking brake disc back on and it just has a single bolt that goes in it and we're going to tighten it down all right so we got a transmission turned over and we're fixing to install this steel right here on the act on the axle seal for this side um, this one goes in the same way it does on the other side once we get done with it then we're going to move on to putting our shift linkage and everything together and then put our output shaft seal in Now we're going to put our output shaft seal in. All right, so we got our seal in. Now it's time to move on to our shifting. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and stack these gears that we took out earlier. This one's going to go in here and you can see it's got two dots here. And this one's going to go here. It's got a slot on this that you have to line up so it fits right. And what you're going to want to do is you want to line this up so whenever it does shift, as you can see, it will line up this dot will be in between here. Once you get that on, then what we're gonna put on is this piece here. Now this transmission does not have a park, even though it does have a spot for it. And we got a big notch here.
So what we're gonna do now is install a spring here that holds it in each gear on the notches here. And what I do is, is I put it there like this and I take me a flathead screwdriver while holding down right here. And usually I do this on the first try. Okay, we got that in. Now what's left to do is put sealer around this. We're gonna clean these two facings off and then put our cap on this. We're gonna put our bolts in. Tighten these down the same way you do every other case, just in a crisscross pattern. Then we'll shift sensor on and put our E-clip on it. Now, one of the last things we gotta do is put our shifting arm back on, and this here has got a notch in it to fit this shaft. And you notice it, it goes on pretty good one way. And if you're trying to put it on the wrong way, it won't go on. So we got it on there. Now we can turn our transmission up. And it shifts through all the gears. That's our neutral. If we're turning this, our output shift isn't turning. You can see right here it isn't turning. That should be low. And that should be our high gear. All right, guys, we got this thing rebuilt. We got all new bearings in it. We got this side of the case that was busted on it. Everything's checked out pretty good. This is ready to go back into the machine. I want to thank you guys for following along with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Share us with your friends. It really helps us out. If you want, if you like doing this type of stuff, and if you're like me, from time to time, you're running into problems with stuff, don't forget to become a member of the crank it group here it will give you one-on-one -on -one access to me and it will allow you to ask me direct questions on how to get stuff fixed and i'll do everything i can to help you get your stuff back on the trail without having it sit here in front of me but we just want to thank you guys for all y'all's support and look forward to seeing y'all in the next video